because it's hot, outside. you need to put short flash. sleeves on. Well, I don't want them on right now because <laughs> my arms get cold. Hot here. I want it to be cold. Did you have a nice Fourth of July? <clears throat> you had a quiet one. You did. <clears throat> yeah, it was quiet. No, yeah, it wasn't here. <laughs> well, it was quiet except for I guess the neighbors across the street about eleven. Good morning, so Ivan. Good to see you on here. I miss you. And Ron, Ron Place, glad you're here. Hi, Marcia. Love you. All right, we're going to start. We've got three here, so let's start. If I wait for the masses to come on, it'll be a little while. So. <laughs> Hope everybody enjoyed your week, and uh, uh, sorry I didn't minister last week. Of course, I did minister. I ministered on love, and evidently a lot of people liked that because there was quite a few views and sharings on that. But hi, Judy. We do need love, and that's I think that you know the news media and a lot of commercials are talking about preparing us for what's next. And in my opinion, what's next is love. We we don't need any more carnal, mindful things taking place. So. Uh, uh, I, last night I sat down to study and I was looking for something that Jesus said. There's, I mean, when, if you search Jesus said and their importance, you find all kinds of verses where it said Jesus said. But the one that really stuck out to me is where Jesus said, I, and, and this is the way it really is in the Greek, I and this one Father are one in existence. He didn't say my Father. And of course, God is Jesus' Father, but God's also our Father too. And so John 10.30 records that, and uh, the translators added the word my, so it really wasn't in there. It just said, I and Father are one. And the correct word for our is I me, meaning I exist. So literally, Jesus was saying, I exist as Father. You know, and we can say the same thing, we exist as Father. Uh, the word our comes from the Greek word emi, meaning I exist, and the word one, what would you think that means? One. <laughs> it means one. But, but, you know, we can say in America, we are all one because we're Americans. You know, and, and I've had people correct me on that. So we are the United States of America. Because yeah. there's a lot of countries that are Americans. But really, in the world, we can say we are one. You know, because we're, there's only one body. We've tried to make ourselves different. We've tried to look with the scene of the eyes and see all different colors of skin and all different uh, statuses of life, different levels of life. And we have loved to have differences, you know, and really there is no difference. We're all one. And so, but this one is an intimate one. We, as God is, so are we. You know, there's some people over in Ohio that I'm one with because we are citizens of the United States of America, but I'm not as they are. You know, they have a different DNA in there. And I'm not talking spiritually speaking here, just physically. But when we think of Father, we've got to realize that as Father is, so are we. As Father is, so was Jesus. And so one of the mistakes of the first race of mankind was to see themselves as separate from Father. And same thing, one of the mistakes of humanity today is to see ourselves as separate. Because when you see somebody as separate, then you relate to them as separate, and you relate to them differently. You know, when we travel around the world, when we go to airports, our eyes see different races. It, we just can't help it, it does it. You know, uh, I, I have done my best to look and just see one, but we do see, oh, those people must be from the Middle East. Oh, those people must be from Africa. Well, those people are from India, and we just put names on them. And really, the truth is we need to see through all that and just say, that's my brother, that's my sister. Yesterday, I was talking to some of our family around the world in, in, uh, in Ireland, and I just loved it. It was so awesome to get to visit with those people and talk with those people. And, you know, they're, they're my brothers. And there was a sister there, too. And she really liked it when I talked a little bit about men respecting women. She was behind her husband cheering them on, you know. So I'm going to put that on Zoom if you want to see that Zoom meeting. We had a wonderful, wonderful conversation, the question and answering. Cecil was there with us too from Houston. But so 
what they did is they saw themselves as missing something, the first race of man. They saw themselves as missing something, and the way you do that is you listen to teachers that teach the knowledge of good and evil. If, if you hear that all the time, then you're going to see yourself as lacking. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I discussed with those gentlemen and that lady yesterday was, you know, the first thing you've got to understand is the church said you were a sinner, and then you had to get saved, but what were you then? And they thought about it for a minute, and then they laughed and said, you're still a sinner, but you're just a sinner saved by grace. And so religiosity has to have you believe in that so they can continue to teach that you're different from God. And some of the old uh, early church fathers, some of them had believed that God was distant and God could not be touched and we were separate from God. And we know that that's not true. <clears throat> so listening to the voice in their thoughts, they heard, has not God said? And they heard, God knows in the day that you do this, you will be like God. They heard those thoughts. And as they, we know they already were as God, just as Jesus was God. And so we, in a sense, hear those thoughts today, different kinds of thoughts. You know, if God, one of the biggest things that you hear in the world today, if God is really God, if God really loves us, if God is omniscient, meaning all-powerful, then why? You know, and we hear that all the time. And those little truth producing thoughts that we let, hi Vicki, that we let come into our brain. And that's why we must think on good things. The Apostle Paul said, if there's anything worth thinking on, think on good things or on these things, which is the living Logos. And so we must not allow those things. Well, if God really exists, <clears throat> then why is this happening? Well, if you were really honest, you know why things happen. In your own life, you know. You know, why am I broke? Why, why do I owe $20,000 and why are they taking my house away from me? If there really is a God, well, God didn't sign that loan. <laughs> God didn't buy a house that was too expensive for you. And the list can go on and on and on. So the differences in Jesus and the first race of man is Jesus heard Father intelligently. That's the only difference, really. And Jesus and the first race of man is Jesus heard Father intelligently. He knew who he was. He knew what his purpose was. And so when he had to settle those two questions and make sure he knew, in Luke chapter 4, he took himself up to the temple set up on the temple mount to get away from everybody and he had to settle those two questions am i who god says i am my father says i am and am i here to take over the world which i could if i wanted to right now you know if i if i tapped in fully 100 percent to my spirit to the where i function supernaturally i could rule this earth and i could have people coming to me for everything and jesus knew that and he said no that's not what i'm here for I'm come to teach. I'm here to teach them that they are masters over their world and masters over this earth. And the power that you have is not to bless you. The power that you have is to bless the inhabitants of the earth. That's what it's for. So he passed that test because he heard God say. So you know, and I told these people in Ireland, have you ever had a thought that I'm not who God says I am, or I'm not this? And they all do. And I said because. You never really heard Father say that you are son of God, you are a daughter of God, you are supernatural, because religiosity wouldn't tell you that. So the, the Jewish leaders were contending with Jesus, as they always did. Religiosity will always contend with teachers of truth, right? Anybody that comes along in any field that has a better way of doing it than the way the other people did it, they're always going to contend with them and they're going to fight with them. And they were questioning him. They were questioning all of his miraculous works and fantastic statements that he made. And I mean, it's amazing how somebody could come along and heal a blind man and tell a lame pe person to get up and walk and somebody would be mad about that. That means they were seared with religiosity. They were so bound up in their religiosity that they could not see the goodness of God working through Jesus. <laughs> And so when he answered their question, some of the Pharisees said, he has a bad nature and he's mad. Now, the scripture says devil, but they're talking about a Damion. They're talking about a supernatural person that has ability to function, but they're out of a bad nature. Then they said, why listen to him? And then other people said, uh, they said, how can a supernatural spirit of a bad nature open a blind eye? In a sense, that's what they said. And the Pharisees really came angrily close to them. And so they drew nigh to him. In other words, they wanted to kill him is what they wanted. Mm -hmm. 
and they were trying to get closer to them and they shouted out to him and said are you the one who is in contact with your mind are you the one you know are you the one are you the messiah if you would and he answered he said i and this one father are one in existence and that made them very angry and it said they grabbed hold of him and then king james said that that he fought him and escaped but he didn't he just transported and he ended up in uh, beyond Jordan, he ended up where John the Baptist originally baptized him, and there he taught, and there the Jews came to him and did the same thing. So, in this chapter in my book that I'm writing, that I'm teaching, I want to explore some meanings of various people in the Bible. And uh, there's no way I can do all that today. I have a lot of them. I just started with the A's. So, there's all, in the Hebrew, there's all kinds of names in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. But I want to explore these names and, and discover more of who we are and more of who Father is and who Jesus knew that he was. And Jesus would even say that. He said, I and the Father are one, in the way the King James. So, if we're one, again, we want to know what we are, who we are, who we're one with, and what's inside of us. And I, as I was writing, I heard the word branded, and I really liked that. When Cal, uh, uh, Carl has cattle. I, I get, do you brand your cattle? Have you ever done that? You, so when you have a herd of cattle or other larger creatures like that, they usually brand them so everybody knows this cow belongs to Carl Smith. They recognize that brand. If somebody steals that cow and takes them away, and if somebody finds them, all they have to do is look at that brand and they know who they belong to. Well, we have been branded with the very nature of our Father. We were interpenetrated, if you would, with the very life and the very character and the very nature of our Father. And I'm going to reveal that to you in these people's names. Now, do everybody, do all people live out of their true character? No. And mainly the reason why is they don't know. They don't know what their true character is because they've been named, not necessarily their given name, but they've been named by society. They've been named, in other words, natured by their family. You know, I've told you about a family that I've had and the, the ones that did it have passed away, but they, they gave their children and grandchildren a false name. They said, oh, they're bashful. Oh, they have this mental disease and they have this mental disease. and literally it branded them how many people do you know that you've heard that their father said that they're stupid you're no good you know we have a relative that was adopted and and he was pretty laid back and his dad his adopted daddy many times would kick his butt and call him lazy and say things to him and that gets inside your conscious awareness and next thing you know you identify with that and that becomes your nature even though it's false and then we can go back again to relig religiosity. Did they not name us? They named us before we knew them because they looked at us and said they're sinners because they're eating too much ice cream and we need to, we need to make disciples of them. Well, that's not what that was about. And so we bring them into church and preach to them that you're a sinner and if you don't get saved, you're going to go to hell. And then we, we change that brand to sinners saved by grace. So that's the same thing. To the point that there are people today that if you tell them that they're not a sinner, they will say blasphemy. You know, and they'll quote the King James Bible and tell you that you're a liar. And so, hence, uh, these people, and, and I, I really enjoy studying names. I've, I've done it for a long, long time. And I've told you that the Bible contains all kinds of colors. I need to look at my screen every once in a while. The Bible contains uh, names and colors and measurements and names and mountains and Zion and Jerusalem and every one of those have a meaning. They have a spiritual meaning that really helps us understand the Word of God. So I enjoy studying these. Uh, name, I've always said name means nature and it does. But Kay, a fair child, also discovered that name means way. When Jesus came and said, I am the way, that was a character that he had. And he was going to show us the way of life that you can live. You know, if you want to know your character, you can study Jesus' character and nature and how he functioned among people. And some choose not to live out of their true nature. Hence, they did not carry on the family name. 
you guys all have children. Have you ever talked to them before and say, that's not how a Smith acts? <laughs> right? That's not how a Richmond acts. We're Richmonds. You shouldn't be acting that way. Well, that's because they're not functioning out of the character that Richmonds represent, if you would. And so the first thing we will learn from, and I ask them to forgive me. They're with the Lord now, but I probably won't pronounce their names right. But the first one is Abiel, A-B-I-E-L. And it's the son of Z Zoror. I started to say Z Zorro. <laughs> Z <clears throat> Just spell them. <laughs> uh, Z-E-R-O-R, -R, who was the son of Bekorath and the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite. Okay. And it was a mighty, he was a mighty man of power. And so when you look up the name in the Hebrew, it means God is father, father of might, father of strength, my father is God. So father branded him with that name. And that was his nature, that was his character. Now I'm not gonna go in and tell you what they all did. And some of them really functioned out of their nature, some didn't. One of them was a king of Judah, and his name meant a lot of the things I'm gonna show you, and they're almost all the same. But he did not do that, he followed, he followed the sins of his father and brought great distress to, to Judah and to that area. And that's what happens. If you're not going to live out of your nature, then, then it's going to be a carnal nature, and it brings distress and despair, shame and guilt, and everything else that goes along with that. And so that first thing meant that, and the only real information I can find on Abiel is that Saul came through Abiel's son, Kish. So that's about the most famous thing that you can find in the Bible about him. But most importantly, I want to follow the trail of the names of people who carry in their names the nature and character of their father because we do too. We, do, we have that way. We, whether I, I tell a lot of people in the world to look up their names and see what they mean. And a lot of them I go back and see them again, like at Walmart, and I'll ask the young lady, did you look it up? And, their eyes just light up and they say yes and they tell me all the wonderful words that it means and I say, does it fit your personality? And they say, yes, it does. And quite often it does. Kay told me hers today and I wish I would have written it down, but it fits her personality very well. And I'll tell you what mine means later on, most of you know, but I feel like it fits my nature and my calling in my life. So his name symbolizes a mighty thought, if you would. A mighty thought, a God thought, not carnal thought. A thought of great power and a thought of strength, which is only from the source of Father God. It comes from that. And again, God is Father, Father of might, Father of strength is what his name means. The next name is Abelzer, A-B-I-E-Z-E-R-E, A-B-I-E-Z-E-R-E, -E -E, means Father of help. It means comforting Father. Remember I told you that Jesus said he was going to pray to the Father and send them many more comforters. And the word comforters means a, lead, a leader and a teacher and a guide of truth. So comforting Father, it symbolizes the acknowledgement that Father, Spirit, Holy Breath, is the source of all understanding and of all true help. Everything that we go to, doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, uh, bankers, you name it, they only give us temporal help. The Father is the source of our help. Today I got up again and my, that pinched nerve in the lower part of my body started hitting me again. And instead of saying, oh my God, you know, oh, you know, oh God help me, you know, I just began to listen to what I wrote last night. I said, Father, you are my source. And I have the power within me to speak perfection in my body. And I just begin to speak to my spine. I begin to speak to that nerve and say, you restore yourself back to your original state. And I begin to speak to my spine to move into divine alignment. And I'm, I'm, by faith, I'm gonna keep doing that. And I'm not sitting here in pain right now back there. And normally, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm not saying I'm not gonna experience pain when I get up, but when I do, I'm gonna speak it again. Remember, you are perfect. Amen. Because that's how Jesus did that. Amen. So the next name, like I said, is Ab Abazar. And we also find from the name Manasseh, from whom Gideon descended, is called I-E-Z-E-R in the Hebrew. It's Manasseh, but it's called I-E-Z-E-R. The King James called him Jezer, 
I wouldn't like that name, J-E-E-Z-E-R. And it's in Numbers 26.30, and his name means he will help, he will comfort, which is succor. That's what that means, S-U-C-C-O-R. He will help, he will comfort. And it's not so much where I'm waiting for God to help me, Father, help me from the foundation of the world, but he will or he can or that help is realized when I lean to my spirit. Yes. When I realize that Father is my source. So Father will, when we say Father will help you, that means he already has, but you experience it yeah. when you realize it and you, act, you make a withdrawal. My money that I have in my bank will help me if I need some financial help, but I have to make the withdrawal, correct? Yeah. I've had people tell me many times, if you need any help, just ask me, you know, but I don't have that relation that I can go make a withdrawal from them, but from Father, yes. all my help is there, Amen. and it's inside of me. It's a nature, and it's a character that belongs to me. Yes. So, in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, and I put on Facebook last night, if you're having any trouble with sleeping, I found the answer to it, oh is open up your Bible when you get in bed. First of all, go wash your face with a hot wash rag. If you're hot, take a shower real good so you can relax and lay down with your Bible and start reading from Chronicles chapter 1 and see how far you get to chapter 9. It's, I had forgotten how long a list of genealogy. It's just <laughs> beget, 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 beget. <laughs> so I'm going through some of those begets, some of those people, and I started with the A's. But it's a very long list, and it starts from Adam, and it goes a long, long way. So there's one name in the verse that reveals the character and, and another character nature of her father, and I, I want you to see it. It's found in the meaning of King David's wife, who was his sister. He married his sister by the name of Abigail of Carmelitas. You ever heard of that? Sounds Spanish. It's in your Bible, <laughs> huh? Sounds Spanish. I don't. It does sound Spanish, doesn't it? I didn't know Abigail was his sister. Yes, it was, I didn't either. But, you know, the Bible is so big, and we don't study a lot of stuff like that. It's C-A-R-M-E-L-I-T-E-S. It sounds to me like a candy. Carmel Letus. <laughs> you know? So Abigail means father of joy, our source of joy. Because it's all about source, right? Father is our source. Father is our essence. So one of those, hi, Tommy, one of those root words for, uh, Hebrew words that is translated Abigail is G-I-Y-L and it's meaning to spin around usually and rejoicing. That was her character. That's her nature. She was like a little Camille when she was young, my granddaughter, that just <laughs> spin around and danced and had fun and you've seen little kids like that, right? And so that's a nature, if you would. Carmelitas comes from the Old Testament 3759 Carmel, K-A-R-M-E-L and it, it means a planted field a garden, an orchard, a vine vineyard, or a park. Uh, by implication, garden produce. It, it comes from full ears of corn, fruitful field, plentiful field, and that's what's planted inside. That's in her nature, and that's what's in you. You have a fruitful field inside of you. Your thoughts can be fruitful where they produce good things. Your imagination is fruitful if you plant good seed in it. And we planted way too much bad seed, right? I planted good seed in my garden, and now I've got watermelons. Carl and I went and picked up, what, seven or eight cucumbers today. I've got corn growing, but the crazy July winds I've never seen before keep knocking it over. But I put good seed in there. But also, while Carl and Ann was looking at my tomato vine, in the midst of one of my hibiscus plants was a plant that hid itself and it kind of looked like the hibiscus, but it was a weed. Mm -hmm. And it had grown very big and it had seed on it mm -hmm. and I hadn't caught it, so I pulled it up. And so we have to be constantly passing down the vain imaginations that want to plant themselves in our good soil, in our good garden, if you would. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Huh? Tend have we have to tend our garden. We have to pay attention to what we say, pay attention to what we hear, mm -hmm. and pay attention to what we view, yeah. that we put our eyes upon. Because there's so much out there in the world today that's trapping people. 
not just religiosity. I'm, I'm taking a, uh, another master's degree in, in uh, biblical counseling, theology and biblical counseling. And one of the hardest things for me to look at and realize was the study on pornography. Pornography is trapping everybody. Well, not everybody, but it's going after everybody. There's not a person that's ever been on the internet or the phone. They ha haven't seen some kind of advertisement, some kind of link that's tried to take you there. And they said the average age of a boy or a girl that starts with pornography or that's affected by it, nine years old. And many of them, four years old. Because you guys, if you're letting your children watch YouTube, and you're letting them watch kids YouTube, it's full of pornography. Because right below there are little advertisements all the time trying to trap them. So not just pornography, but religiosity and political upheaval and all that stuff is trying to trap us and that's why we need to pay attention and be present progressive in how we do this. So uh, the idea behind this, this name, and its association with David, which David represents love. David represents joy. Did you know that? He loved Father God. He wrote some awesome psalms, right? Yes. And so our Carmelita signifies abundance. Thus, thus we see that joy and bun, abundance are intricately connected together. When you know you have abundance, you're joyful. I mean, when Donna's mother passed away, we were very sad. But several months later, we went and found out that she left us a lot of money. And it was bittersweet, but it brought some joy into our life because she enabled us to pay her home off. You know, and then when I won some money one time on my company, it produced joy, right? I won $25,000 shopping spree on the internet and we could buy anything we want. We had to do it in about a week and a half. It was fun, you know, right? So when you know that you have an abundance in you, not that I have all the money that I want today, but I have all the money I need. Not that I have all the food I w would like to have, but I have all I need. When I know that I have all things that pertain to spiritual life and godliness, that should produce joy. So why are there a bunch of, quote, Christians walking around all sad and fearful and scared and thinking the end of the world's coming? Because they don't know who they are. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And they don't know who Father is. They don't know that they've been branded yes. with the very nature and character of our Father, and no weapon formed against them can prosper. But the key is if they know. Because if they don't know, then they give somebody else or something else a power. That's right. So all this gives us the idea that power, strength, honor, and glory originate in Father. And it is a spiritual law. And it's spiritual in our, ca our character. And so Father is the Father of might, but the Father of strength, the Father of brilli brilliance, and the Father of splendor. And He has made us in that image. And he's made us, and we're beautiful. Next one of one of Aaron's sons. Aaron's son's name is uh, one of them is Abihu. You've heard of him. I've taught on him a lot. His name means Father is God, or He who is, He who is Father, and God is Father. Can you see this commonality in all these names? How it's did you spell his name? huh? How did you spell Abihu? Uh, A B I H U. You should have known that from grade school. <laughs> Abihu. Abihu. No, Abihu. But you're going to see these names are very common because literally, and I just heard this in my thoughts, I branded myself and my people. We're branded. Mm. Ab Abihu was one who was set apart for priesthood. So the spiritual understanding of the priesthood points to Christos, which means one who keeps his mind in contact with the God mind or keeps his awareness in contact with the God mind because Christos is contact. And so a son or a daughter of God must keep their awareness in the God mind, stayed on him. You ever heard that there's that song, uh, something about staying, staying on him, keeping your mind stayed on him? That's what this is talking about. And so if you're doing this, if you're keeping your awareness on your God mind, then you will end up perfectly demonstrating what it means to stay in your original state, and that's what Jesus did. And we could do that too. And it's not a work, it's not laborious, it's just practicing, like you said, paying attention to what you're thinking. 
if there's anything worth thinking on, think on these things. Think on the truth of the word. Think on the logos. Be willing to put down the surface understanding of the word and find you some comforter teachers that can explain to you what these things mean. And there are many in the earth today. The people in Ireland for a while did what everybody else does when I teach on the internet. They begin to say, well, what about this scripture? And what about that scripture? And I just kept saying, remember, you're reading the King James Version. That's not what Jesus said. That's not what Paul said. And what they, the Old Testament people said was from their perception. And what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said was also from their perception. And we know that because Jesus said, you can't bear the things I'm trying to tell you. You're still thinking as carnal. You're still thinking I'm a physical earthly king. You want me to rule right here with you. But be of good cheer. I'm going to pray to Father, and the Father is going to send you many, many more comforter teachers just like me, and they are going to explain the things that I sought to teach you. Jesus didn't have time to teach them what he wanted to because they were all bankrupt. They all wanted bread. They all wanted healings or whatever. So Ibihu symbolizes one who stands in the ideal of sonship. Stands in the ideal of sonship. Father is God. God is Father. I am a son. I am a daughter of the living God. And you stand in that. And you don't let nothing move you whatsoever. You don't listen to the lie. Next, the grandson of Benjamin is Ibahud. I-B-I-I H-A-D, it's actually pronounced Albahud, meaning father of majesty, father of vigor, father of youth. We need that, Carl. <laughs> father of youth, father of praise. And what does praise mean? To tell the story, right? Iba Hood's name symbolizes the true authority that we have, the true praise that we have. In other words, we really know how to tell the story of God. We really know how to explain who Jesus was and what Jesus did and who we are. Also, it symbolizes wholeness. We are whole. We lack nothing in might uh, and might. And we have this, this inception of holy breath within every person. It all belongs to us. So we are whole. But most of our prayers seem to be that we're not whole, right? Because we're seen. We're getting diagnoses on us. Norma just got one that you know we don't agree with. I've had some on me that I don't agree with, but I'm not denying that they're not there. But it doesn't belong to me because I'm whole. Amen. You know, and so I, doing my very best to speak to those things and say you're perfect. You know, thyroid, you're perfect. Norma's liver is perfect. Amen. It's perfect, and and speak to it and say do what you're intended to do. Yes, Just like amen. we take a child and shake him. We shouldn't shake him, but do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to keep your room clean. You know? You're supposed to be obedient. You're supposed to be a, a viable working part of this family. You're a rich man. Do what you were created to do. We can do that to our organ. We can speak to our brain, Carl. Yes. You know, And we may say, well, I've tried it and tried it. No, we're not supposed to try it. We're supposed to do it. By the faith of God, not by your faith. That's one thing I've learned in, in the Bible school. And I've learned a lot of things in this Bible school. If, you're, if you want to go to college and get you a, a degree, but more than learn, I highly recommend Global Grace Seminary. I wasn't sure about the teaching there in the beginning, but now I found out, and the majority of it is very, very good. But one thing I really like, it's, it's not my faith, it's the faith of God. Yes, amen. It's the faith of Jesus. Yes. What was the faith of Jesus? He put his faith in God. If God said it, I can put my faith there. Amen. And so I don't have to build my faith up. I don't, you know, I don't have to have somebody come to me and say, well, the reason you're sick is because your faith isn't strong. It's not about my faith. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. That's good. It's the faith of God. Yes. The fact that my children are my children is because of the faith of that woman and me coming together and producing a child. Amen. And that, that child is ours. Yes. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So all this is ours. And it belongs yes. to us now. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Remember Zechariah and Zechariah 4 5. A messenger comforter spoke to him. And he spoke basically to Zechariah about Zerubbabel. And he said, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by physical might, because that's what that means, not by physical power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. 
This is not done by memorization. This is not done by physical binding the devil and, and like one of my pastors said, demanding God. We don't demand God, <laughs> right? We put, our, we put our demand on the source within us. We speak to this body and say, you have to function properly yes. because you were created by God yes. Almighty. Hallelujah. And you are a perfect organ. You are a perfect digestive system. You are a perfect brain. You. you are a perfect spinal cord. Be ye perfect, for your creator is perfect. Amen. Amen? Good. Yes. I got my Holy Ghost good yes, good. yes. So do you think this messenger knew something of the nature of Father? And how it works in people, that nature. That nature wants to work inside of us. You know, if, if my, my dad was a brilliant scientist and I got his brain and I got his knowledge, I would want it to work. I wouldn't want to step around, sit around saying all the time, well, my father is smart. My father owns all the cattle and all the hills. My father it will heal me if he wants to. My father will bless me if he wants to. No, it's not that. This is who Father is, so that isness is in me, right? Amen. He made me that way. So all we do is we function properly, and we do that when we live and move and have our being out of our spirit nature, rather than the carnal might, carnal power, which is nothing but dead works. Another one is Abijah, A-B-I-J-A-H. We should have named some of our children these names. <laughs> And that's found in First First Chronicles two twenty four, and it means whose father is Jehovah is, who whose father is Jehovah is, is Jehovah is because Jehovah is just whatever you need to put in there. That's who Jehovah is to you. Father is Jah J A, and Father is Jehovah. So you can see in a sense here, Father branded himself and the names and the characters of all these people and all peoples and all the earth. And we carry the very attributes of our father. So Abijah's name refers to a to manifest man as being the offspring of the one who stays in contact with God, whose father Jehovah is. And in other words, we're manifesting as being in contact with God. Jesus manifested as being in contact with God. If you're walking around in fear, you're not manifested. You're not manifesting and staying in contact with the mind of God. If you're walking around in doubt, or whatever it is, and we're all there. If, you're, if, you're, if your body is sick, we're not manifesting being totally in contact with God. Because just like I said when I talked about this, electricity is all running through my house. All the electricity that's needed to power everything in this house is running through this house. There's a plug right over there, and if I have a light bulb and it's turned on, I wonder why it's not shining. It's not in contact with its source. So you plug it in, and it shines. So how do we do that? Just by faith. We say, Father, by faith, by your faith, I, I'm, I'm already plugged into you, but I'm going to consciously see me plugged into you, my source, and I'm just going to let it flow. I'm just going to let this light shine inside of me. And I realize that the source is my Father, not my good works, not my pain tithe, not my serving, and not me being blessed because, 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 because. Yes. The wonderful Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so. Thank you, Lord. So, though this is true, not all biblical characters named Abijah carried out this staying in contact with God. You can find some of them where they they had some aspect of it, but they weren't they wasn't quite one hundred percent in contact. So one moment they were following God, and the next moment they were following the the carnal dictates of the flesh, if you would. So the same is true in our age. There are many who do not walk in the true character and the true nature. We've been there too, but we're learning how to do that. In Genesis ten twenty eight and in First Chronicles one two we find the name I B. I M A E L, Ibamel, meaning a father from God, the father, my father from God, and father of abundance. And so that would be the father nature from God, the father nature of abundance. We lack nothing. 
So we continue to see in these names the fact of man being the descendant of Father God. And if you remember in Genesis 26 where I translated it, the last part of it said God created man, male and female, to recreate him. So every person ever born of this earth was born in the image and the likeness and the very face of God with the same character. I taught these people in Ireland yesterday that Adam never lost the nature of God. Adam was branded, and when you're branded, you can't be unbranded unless religiosity comes in and unbrands you in your conscious awareness, but you still have the nature of God within you. And what we've got to do is uncover all that garbage that was put on you that's made you blind to the truth, and when that happens, then you will live with your eyes wide open, and then you see truth. So, uh, Abimeel, A-B-I-A-M-A-E-O, symbolizes a sage, S-A-G-E, a man's awareness not established in consciousness enough to produce good fruit. It's, it's, his awareness is not, defective. it's a little bit, but it's defective, right? It's got a lot of false information. And so they're not able to produce good fruit. And they always wonder why, and they think it's because they're a bad person, God doesn't love them, the list goes on and on and on, but their awareness needs to be brought up higher. As we're saying, and Kay has said too, uh, that the, everything in the Bible is about awareness now. You're going to either walk in a carnal awareness or a spiritual awareness. It's your choice. And every time you hear Father calling people up higher was so they would have a greater awareness and a greater understanding. And then in 1 Kings 1, 1-4, we find the story where David was old. He was stricken in years. And he could not retain the heat in his body. Remember that story? And so one of these uh, servants came up with a really good idea. Let's get him a beautiful damsel. That's what men would do, isn't it? <laughs> and I always told Donna, you know, if I get old and cold, you need to get me a concubine to lay down at my feet. But it wasn't just to lay down at the feet. She became his wife. And this guy's idea was if he would make love with her, that he would warm up. And that was his stupid idea, but it didn't work. David didn't even know she was there at all. And so what's really interesting is they, they said, let's find a find the king a young damsel. What was interesting is they, they said virgin first, and then they said damsel, but it wasn't virgin, it was damsel. And these people, and let's see, oh no, I was talking to a man today with Cox Internet. Uh, something happened, I was up, uploading my, uh, trying to upload a grammar program, and it actually started downloading a new word processor, I mean Word, and so I lost all my email contacts. And if you're listening to me, I don't have your email contact anymore. So send me an email to Dr. Roy E. Richmond at Cox.net, and just say, add me, and I'll put you back in my contacts. But I lost probably a thousand contacts. But I was, this man asked me what I do, and I said, well, I translate scripture, and I show people where much of the Bible, uh, the things that are in there are not really true. And you know what he said to me? You know, I, I read historical books that most Christians never read, and he said, I discovered that Mary was not a virgin. I, I about fell on my chair. And I said, what? And he said, it actually says damsel. And he said, also, I found out that Mary already had two children. I've never found that anywhere. But he knew this. But here, here they said damsel. And what's interesting, it says they searched far and wide for a beautiful damsel. So there must not have been a lot of beautiful women back then. But they found her, and her name is Abishag. A-B-I-S, Abishag. That's a weird, how would you like to have that name? Abishag. A-B-I-S-H-A-G, Abishag. And the old hag moved in with the king. <laughs> she was a Shunammite, and she was beautiful, and she was brought to the king. She cherished the king, she loved the king, she ministered to the king, but the king knew her not. And I looked it up and it just, he didn't even know she was there. He didn't know she was there. It was just a kind of a stupid idea. So the mean that Abishag, with the history of her given name, reveals her as being representative of ignorance. Ignorance, it was an ignorant tool that they used. And limited belief, that's that spiritually awakened man 
really holds regarding life that they had this limited understanding of life. Life is divine. Life is the source of God. God, spirit, you know, we don't need man coming to us with a carnal idea as to how to sustain our life. And I appreciate everybody that tries to help me. But since three years ago, when I started having a problem in my mesenteric organ, I have had so many people write me and suggest things for me to do, and I understand it. And if I have no faith in God, then yeah, I need to do those things. But I'm telling you, I'm number one is I'm depending on God, my source. Amen. I'm depending on my chi, which is God, my spirit, my essence. That's what I'm going after. Yes. Now, I'm not telling you I don't go to doctors. But if they can't give me real health, I'm not taking their pills. I'm not taking their drugs. I'm not going that way. But if they can say, Roy, I know what's wrong with you. Your hormones are off and we need to get your hormones balanced. Then yes, I'll go for it. If you're low on vitamin D, take some vitamin D, then yes, I'll go for it. But that's what she pictures here because it was just a good idea. So it doesn't emanate from conscious awareness apart from spirit, wisdom and knowledge. It doesn't come from our psyche. It's not purely a mental quality, nor does it spring from physical. It's spiritual. All of our answers is spiritual. Spiritual quickens the mortal body. Spiritual quickens your conscious awareness. It wakes you up. It vitalizes you consciously by contacting your spirit or your God mind. So what she did was the result of a result of a chronically mindful good idea. How many of you have ever done that before? I have. So this name Ab Abishag in the Hebrew means father of error, father of cause from wandering, wandering, w a n, wandering away from the truth, if you would, father of ignorance. So. At one of Jesus' confrontations with the Pharisees, he told them, you are of your father, the Mosaic law. That's the traducer. That's the devil. In other words, it was error. It was ignorance. It was caused by wandering away from what would produce life. And Moses got that from mythology and paganism. These Ten Commandments have been around way before that took place. Yeah. And Moses was mad at the children of Israel, was he not? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you be if you led three million plus people through the desert and they're griping and they're complaining and they're probably having affairs and they're probably doing all the stuff that he made that law up with mm -hmm. and he come down and said, God said, don't do this. God said, well, it wasn't God saying it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. now, I know people struggle with that. Just making some rules. Are you getting bored? <laughs> okay. Abishah was a son of David's sister, A-B-I-S-H-I-A, Zeruah. And Abishah was with David during David's conflict in Saul and uh, uh, his wars and his wars with the Philistines. And he was a chief. He was a warrior and he was a mighty man in 2 Samuel 2.18 and, and 1 Chronicles 2.16. His name in the Hebrew means father of precious gifts source of wealth my father gives and what is wealth with god is it gold and silver mm -hmm. it's wisdom and knowledge and understanding right so he symbolizes the inherited from past generations that the, the law of destruction if you would from natural man he symbolizes been free from that and he understands that god is his supply again god is his wealth god Give. So any traducing hindrance that's exposed to the light of an all-sufficiency of God will disappear and go away. Correct? So again, a physical picture would be, I'm poor, I don't have any money, I'm always struggling, I just can't seem to make it, I just don't have enough to live, and I find out that I have a great-great-grandpa that's been looking for me, and he's got wealth beyond imagination. And I find him, and he is my relative of sufficiency. And he provides that for me, then that destroys that mentality of lack. I don't lack anymore. Mm -hmm. And that brings joy, yes. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So when we really understand that God is our sufficiency, Paul was told by Jesus when he prayed, or my father, take this dependency on the law from me. And the father spoke to him and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient mm -hmm. for you. If it's sufficient, then you don't need anything else. If I go get a blood test and I think my 
vitamin D is low and the doctor comes up and said your vitamin D level is very high and I said well I'm going to take some more and he'll say no what you have is sufficient it will take care of you it will give you what you need and we're always seeking for more from our father so when it when it when the light of truth comes error sinks into nothingness it, it's no thing anymore it's, it's nothing whatsoever they cannot stand in the presence of the almightiness the omnipresent the omniscience of the one god active in you and that's the key i've always known that the omniscient one was in me that's the mind of god all-knowing but i never tapped into it for many many years now i've tapped into that mind and it's amazing how that all-knowing knowingness comes to me and functions in me and many times I I know things that I don't know where I know them, know them from it's just because I tapped in I told Donna last night I had a fabulous dream after I finally got to sleep and I was going down all these names I was going through the whole genealogy chron of uh, uh, this chrono chrony chronology and all of a sudden there was this awareness that it was bringing me up higher and higher and higher and higher and I thought, am I going to have to translate every name? <laughs> Which I wouldn't mind doing it. But all of a sudden appeared before me a group of like nine, ten people that were just floating. Just kind of floating in a meditative state. And they were telling me things, and I don't know what they told me, but it was marvelous. It was a great experience that I had. And I was aware that they were comforter messengers that have existed for a long, long time. And then I woke up. <laughs> but it, but it was awesome because this this revelation just that comes from this that these these God branded him these people with his name. And if he branded them with his name, his nature, his way, then he branded you with that too. And I don't like to say he, but I, it's this one God did that for us. Another one, A B I S H A L O M, Abishalom. He's the great grandfather of Abijam, the king of Judah. His Hebrew name means father of peace and perfection, source of salvation. And salvation is an eternal thing. We were saved from the day we were born. We were saved from the foundation of the world. So in the name of Abishalom, Abba we see the ideal of peace and perfection, or an idea of spiritual unity, an idea of wholeness, order, soundness, completeness that gives peace. See, when you know you're complete, it brings you peace. When you know you lack nothing, it brings you peace. It's the idea that I'm perfect, right? Je 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 Jehovah Shalom means perfect or perfection. So the peace and perfection ideal has been degenerated to a very sensual, carnal understanding of God, not realizing that he is our perfection and that we are perfect individuals. Like love, that look for peace and perfection. People look for it all in the wrong places and all the wrong ways. So Abijam did not follow his true nature. Uh, as the king of Judah, he walked in the sins of his fathers. But that still was his nature. That's still who he was. His nature was perfection and peace. His nature was peace, perfection, salvation, and uh, completeness, soundness, wholeness, unity, all that. And then we have Abishah, Abishua, A-B-I-S-H-U-A. -S he was a third descendant from Aaron, the high priest, and the grandson of Benjamin in 1 Chronicles 8.4. His name means father of deliverance, father or source of abundance, my father of opulence. And tell us what that word means. I had to look it up. It means magnificence, wealth as in knowledge, and luxury. We live a luxurious life. And it has nothing to do with our houses or cars or anything. It's life. It's life more abundantly. Right? Yes. Also, it means my father is rescue. How, how did he rescue us? He rescued us from the great lie of separateness. His father is rescuing us today through comforter teachers of things that we have forgotten that we knew from eternity and bringing these things into our remembrance. His name represents ruling thoughts of Father as being the source of our spiritual and physical life. The ruling thoughts that yes. Father God is our central. Yes. 
everything we think is is in order with how Father God would think. One of the ruling thoughts that we need today is when we look at people, we see people the way God sees them. Every person in the United States needs to do that. Yes. Not just white, not just black, not just Chinese. Or We all need to see the way God sees us and he sees us all as sons and daughters. We are brothers and sisters more than we know. More than we know. Abishur, A-B-I-S-H-U-R, pronounced Abishur, is father of a strong wall. Now what is our wall? Our walls are what? Salvation, that's right. So is father of a strong wall, salvation, father of fortitude, my father is a wall of strength. That's what that means. You know, I always use Butch Hodge as my example. He's a big, tall guy. He's lost a lot of weight, you know, not tons of weight, but he looks, but he's still big, still tall. And uh, if somebody was going to come beat me up, I would want Butch Hodge in front of me. I'd say, uh, wait a minute, you might want to second guess this. My friend is Butch Hodge. <laughs> And he will beat the living daylights out of you. Because he's always telling me he's got my back. <laughs> he tells me that. Father has your back. Yes. Father has your front. Yes. Father has your side. Thank Father you. is above you. Father is below you. And if you make your bed in hell, Father is with you. Right? Amen. This is good. It is good. It's blessing me. I don't know if I'm cold or if I keep getting the Holy Ghost cool bumps. <laughs> I'm not cold, though. Uh... So Abishur symbolizes perception of recognition of Father as the wall of my strength, perception of Father being my protection all about me and all within me, Father, the perception that Father is my stronghold, Father is a fortification against error and seeming weakness. I'm not weak. We're not weak. We never have to be weak. Then one of David's wives, <clears throat> I've only got a couple more pages and I'll be done. <clears throat> one of David's wives and mother of Shepatha was Abitel, A-B-I-T-A-L. He had several wives. It wasn't fair, was it, Carl? <laughs> yes, I don't think I'd want more than one wife. Her, her Hebrew name means father or source of do, D-E-W. You know what do is, right? Source of dew, father of freshness. My father is be doing freshness. This is the idea that the entire soul of mankind is consens uh, consistently renewed and refreshed in mind and body from only father, who is our source. And then it says source of precipitation, which to me that would be the oil of spirit or the living water. He's the source of the living water. Being united with Father, which is love, makes harmony and peace and perfection and opens one's conscious awareness to receive the dew, if you would, the water of the Word, the oil of Spirit of Father God. And you cannot have harmony and peace and perfection while in a restless state, while in a harmonious state. You can't have that. God said in the book of Hebrews through the Apostle Paul, I believe Paul wrote the Hebrews, he said, surely there will be a people that will enter into my rest. Yes. Because until you rest, you can't have harmony. Mm -hmm. Because you're fighting, you're arguing, you're debating. This whole world will never have harmony until people enter into Father's rest of oneness. Right? Mm -hmm. When does the dew come? In the morning. In the still of night, yeah. early in the morning, yeah. but when the night is real still, it can't come when there's wind because wind blows it all the way, right? Mm -hmm. And Isaiah said, we've been travailing to give birth to the man-child, but all we've done is brought forth wind, and that's doctrines. Doctrines of men will not allow the dew to come. Mm -hmm. Doctrines of men will not allow the living water of truth to come into your life. And that's why we have to allow the Father through comforter messengers and through you listening to Father, remove all that hinders us. And when that happens, the dew begins to settle in on you and it's living waters. Mm -hmm. 
And then we find another Benjamite, the son of Shaharim, of Hushim, H-U-S-H-I-M, 1 Chronicles 8.11. His name is A-B-I-T-U-B, or Adtub, meaning father, source of good. My father is goodness. So the spiritual meaning of his name is the idea that father is good and that all goodness is from father and it is divine and that the father is bountiful. Our thoughts are to be full of wholeness and bounty. Never thinking of lack. Never thinking, when is Roy going to go make another sale? <laughs> When's Carl going to go make us some more money? I'm not going to give you anything. <laughs> but a whole a, a, a thought, a strong thought of wholeness and a strong thought of bounty. In other words, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. My name is Roy Edward Richmond. My DNA shows that my heritage is from northern France and England. My mom and dad told me I was German and Indian. And so I always thought I was German and Indian, you know, but I didn't go change my clothes and start acting like either one of them. But I found that, I found that out. And in England, my name means Royal King, the King Protector. And I just love that. When I saw that, it's not haughty or whatever. The Bible says we are royal kings. And my job is to be a comforter, messenger, teacher, to protect people with the truth of the word, all who want me to. I'm not the only one. There's lots of them out there. But another thing that the Lord showed me one time is one of the characters and attributes of Father, uh, through many of them, is Jehovah Roi. And that can also be pronounced Roy. And it means shepherd or pastor who feeds the truth of God. So Father God is our master, Jehovah Roi, but Father has gifted and put the character and nature of that in many people, and I have that gift. I'm not ashamed of that. So I do believe it is vital for us to discover the branding of Father's nature in each and every one of us. You can look at your name, and, and you can study it. You can ask what it means in whatever heritage you have, and it's you that comes up really nice. Some people, their names were made up, and there's no such name, so it's kind of hard to find things like that. But names mean nature, and Father birthed you. They mean the way, and Father branded you in the way, and the truth, and the life. And Jesus said he was with the Jews, and he showed them the way. He said, I'm here to show you the divine nature. So in closing, we see Father in all people as source. We see Father, we do, we see Father in all people as source. Jesus using this title, Father, indicates absolute being. That's why he was using the title follow, Father, but he's indicating absolute being, the first invisible logos. In other words, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't see God because God is spirit and God, uh, God is holy breath, if you would, but, it's the sor but he's the source of all that is. From Father proceeds all sons and all daughters then, visible. So Spirit, as Kay says in our book, Living Out of Our Spiritual Resources, Spirit is, uh, or we are Spirit slowed down to visibility. And so Jesus calls Father Life Source. Jesus calls Father Essence. Jesus calls Father Spirit. Jesus calls Father Holy Breath. The Father is called Chi. The, the people over in, in Asia and the Chinese people use the word Chi. And that's all that. He said, our Father, our life source, our essence, our spirit worketh, therefore I work. In other words, I can't do anything unless I do it out of my source. And there was a, nan, a man named Hipp Hippolytus. I don't know where they all come up with these names. He said, there was at first nothing whatsoever that existed visible. Father was in solitude, unborn in flesh, either by space or time. But as, and as much as Father had the faculty of generation or generation, it seemed good to him at last to bring to birth and to put forth what he had in himself that was fairest and most perfect. From he was no lover, for he was no lover, let me fix that real quick, for, for he was no lover of solitude. He was and is love, but love is not love unless there be an object of love. Isn't that good? Yes, 
So what we need to do with this, and I'm going to go further, I won't go through the whole alphabet, but there's a lot of, lot of names in there, but we must learn of our true nature, we must learn of our true char character, we must learn of our true life and way of doing things, and allow Father to teach us, and allow Father to continue to show His character and nature that's inside of us. And Father does that through speaking to you, Father does that through anointed comforter messengers, and the only way to walk out of that false path that hinders us is to live in the eternal future of now and know that now I am as Father. Be able to say like Jesus said, I and the Father exist as one and there is no difference. And religiosity will stone you, yes. They won't want to hear that, so don't tell them. You know, if they don't want to wake up, don't wake them up. But people that want to hear the truth, they'll, they'll hear the truth and they'll know. So I hope you enjoy that. I thoroughly enjoyed studying it last night, and there's so much more to it. But we, there, we'll never be able to exhaust the character and the nature of our Father. He, he, he's husband for those that don't have husbands. He's wise for those who don't have wives. Whatever it is that somebody doesn't have physically, Father is that. What, and in my, my essay on, on the counseling for pornography and everything, I said he can be that fake image that they've been bowing down to. He can be that satisfaction that they get from those things, you know. And we think that's disgusting, but we have had habits ourselves that are different. It can be anything. It can be gossip meeting. It can be, you, the list goes on and on. I don't judge anybody for what they struggle with because it's a mental illness. It's a conscious awareness that's been seared and it takes hold of you. And what's interesting is they said pornography damages the brain. It damages the frontal lobe where they can't make a decision to stop or to get help. And it damages another place up here in another part of the brain. But the truth is all addictions damage you, do they not? Yes. They get hold of you and they grab you. But you can be healed. There's healing for everything. And it's God our help that's inside of us. And so that's what we do. It's by faith we continue to tap into that. So you guys out on the internet, Facebook, thank you for being with us today. And I'm sorry I'm not staring at the camera all the time, but I've got a congregation here today, so it's exciting that they're here. But we love you guys. And uh, don't fear, because when you fear, you're pretty much not believing who you are. And whatever's going on in our world, we're going to get through it. Uh, there's been generations after generations before us have been through political upheavals, have been through all kinds of stuff and we come out of it. The ones who don't are the ones who fear it. Because if you fear it, you give it a power. Amen? Amen. So we love you and God bless you. And we, we speak perfection over every part of your being and over every part of your life in the nature of Jesus. Amen. Amen.